Pseudomonas aeruginosa is a type of bacteria that's very prevalent in healthcare and it causes bad infections. So it is a microbe and it causes infections in various parts of our body, especially in people who have weakened immune systems. And we call people who have weakened immune systems people who are immunocompromised because their immune system has been compromised. This bacteria is a gram-negative bacteria, and that means it's just a type of bacteria that has a strong outer membrane, and this makes it more resistant to antibiotics in comparison to other bacteria, which are what we call gram-positive. So this bacteria, Pseudomonas, is commonly found in soil and water, especially in hospital environments where it can survive on surfaces and medical equipment. It's an opportunistic pathogen, Opportunistic means that it takes opportunity of someone being sick. This means it usually doesn't harm people who are healthy, but it can lead to very serious infections, especially people who are sick or have these weakened immune systems. We saw a lot of pseudomonas infections during COVID days because people were immunocompromised from having coronavirus. So with pseudomonas, infection begins when this bacteria attaches to our body surfaces like your skin, especially your respiratory tract or medical devices like catheters. And the bacteria does this by these tiny hair-like structures that are called pili, which help it stick to cells. And it can move around by something called flagella. Once attached, the bacteria can form these things called biofilms, which are these communities of bacteria or slime layers. And they make the bacteria harder to treat. So that's why Pseudomonas is usually difficult to treat. The bacteria also produce many different toxins and enzymes that help it spread and damage our tissue. Issues. So for example, there's a toxin called exotoxin A and it disrupts protein production in our cells and it can lead to their cell death. There's also enzymes that can break down important proteins in our body like collagen and elastin and these help keep our tissue strong and flexible. There's another toxin that it produces that, pre uh, that the bacteria produces that produces harmful molecules called reactive oxygen species, and these can damage our cells and cause inflammation, and too much inflammation is not good. One of the most serious consequences of having a Pseudomonas aeruginosa infection is its ability to hide from our immune system, and we call that evading an immune system. So the bacteria produce, has this protective layer on the outside of it called a capsule, and this protects the bacteria from being destroyed by our immune cells. The bacteria can also communicate with other bacteria using this system called quorum sensing, and this allows it to coordinate its attack and become more resistant to treatment. Infections caused by Pseudomonas, they can affect various parts of our body. In our lungs, it can cause pneumonia, especially in people who are on ventilators like coronavirus days or people with conditions like cystic fibrosis. People with cystic fibrosis have thick mucus and it builds up and it creates this perfect environment for bacteria to grow. In the bloodstream, Pseudomonas can lead to sepsis, which is a life-threatening condition where our immune system overreacts to the infection and damages the body. And it can also cause urinary tract infections, especially with people who get catheters, because sometimes when healthcare staff are putting it in, the microbe will have bit on the catheter, unfortunately, and it can cause an infection. We can also see infections in people who are burn victims, and many other areas where you can see prevalence of pseudomonas infections. The treatment of pseudomonas infections, it's a bacterial infection, so we treat it with antibiotics. It is challenging though, because the bacteria are naturally resistant to many antibiotics. Doctors usually use a combination of strong antibiotics like beta-lactams and carpineums and fluoroquin fluoroquinolones. And in the cases where the infection is resistant to a lot of these drugs, there's polymyxins and these are used as last resort. Last resort means you try not to begin with them. You try to test out different things because you don't want to have increasing antibiotic resistance. So researchers are constantly looking for new ways to combat pseudomonas infection. 
which is a very serious thing. One of the best things we can do with everything is try to prevent these infections, especially in hospitals and healthcare settings where people are already immunocompromised. So that can be done through proper hygiene and making sure that medical equipment is really sterile. This is so important. And then you can also have infection control measures. So patients with weakened immune systems are the ones we worry about the most. And so that's Pseudomonas bacterial infections.